number 62. How you doing, everybody? Eric and Twins 28 here. It is January 16th, 2022. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, this is the first week of the playoffs for the NFL. Super wild card weekend. And guess what? The Vikings didn't make it. Of course they didn't. They finished 7 and 10. Or no, excuse me. I'm wrong. They finished 8 and 9. They should have been 7 and 10, but they decided to um, start all their starters and then beat the living crap out of the Chicago Bears in a game that mean meant nothing. The season was over after we got our asses kicked in lamb blow, lamb blow as I call it. But I digress. We'll get to the Vikings in a minute. Let's talk real quick about uh, things going on in the NFL right now. Um, got grab my phone, look at the scores because my phone's charging. So I'll just go off top of my memory. Eagles got embarrassed today, proving that they had no business being in the wild card. But then again, the Vikings probably would have played much better. So Buccaneers def took the uh, Eagles out to the behind the woodshed and beat the crap out of them. Dallas embarrassed themselves and lost to the 49ers. Um, that last drive, Dallas had... What the F was that? I mean, you're down eight points. You need to get a touchdown. Plus two point conversion no timeouts 14 seconds and you run a draw play if that's the best that kellen moore offensive coordinator can call up i don't want him anywhere near being a head coach of the middle of the vikings i know he's interested in the job i know the vikings are interested in him pass if that's as good of play calling he's got i'm out especially with a quarterback like kirk cousins it ain't gonna happen so I'm glad they lost um let's see buffalo Beat the crap out of the Patriots. Glad to see that. The um, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs right now beating up on Pittsburgh Steelers. Looks like Ben Roethlisberger is finally coming to an end. Um, Mahomes throwing touchdowns left and right. And Andy Reid is just chanting more touchdowns, more. like um, Kind of like Kylo Ren in Star Wars. Oh, the uh, Raiders and the crap. Who did the Raiders play? Oh, the the, the Bengals. Uh, Bengals looked really good. Um, happy for them. They finally broke a thirty-plus year playoff drought. So, uh, congrats to them. They're going to move on to the next round. I think they take on the Titans, if I'm not mistaken. I think they are taking on the Titans. I'm glad the Titans are number one seed, but uh, if uh, if Kansas City plays the way they do, they're probably going to be end up in the Super Bowl, so it probably won't matter who the number one seed is, whether it's Tennessee or if Tennessee loses next week. Um, I don't think it's going to matter, but that's okay. Um, so that's what's going on in the NFL right now. Uh, tomorrow night's Arizona and Rams. I think Arizona's going to win. Um, I'm, po I'm pulling for Arizona. Uh, the Rams have been beatable this past few weeks including the week they played the Vikings when Stafford threw for three picks, even though they beat the Vikings. It's Matt Stafford old. I've been saying it for many years, playing Madden, playing against the Lions, and then Matthew Stafford, watching Stafford over the years. He's overrated. Yeah, he's good at times, but more times than not, he's average, and he sucks. So I'm not surprised, and I won't be surprised if the Rams blow it tomorrow night, but we'll see. I think... Uh, Cardinals have a good young team. Kyler's exciting to watch. Um, they can be beaten too, but I'm going with the Cardinals just because I hate L.A. And um, everything they've done to their fans over the years, leaving town, both teams, and then, uh, you know, Stan Crony or whatever his fucking name is, um, buying the team and then moving them out of St. Louis screwing St. Louis out of the Rams, I'm moving them back to L.A., blah, blah, blah. Um, I just, I don't like Los Angeles, and I don't want to see them go far. So that's my my uh, belief on that. Let's go back to the Vikings, though. Last Sunday, starting the starters over the backups. Um, there was no point in starting the starters. You're risking injury, serious injury, starting your starters, the season's over. You might as well have started Kellen Mond. Let's see what he's got, what he can do for this team. Um, Wyatt Davis, the guard, who hadn't played at snap at all all season, 
and some of the other rookies on defense, um, Surratt, uh, and there was a few others that haven't started. It's just, it's just mind-boggling, and just the stories and the news articles that are coming out about Zimmer and Spielman about what's been going on the last several weeks with the Vikings is just mind-numbing and eye-opening. And uh, Zimmer's comments about Kellen Mond after the Green Bay game. Uh, in the Green Bay game, um, Kirk Cousins was deactivated because he hit the COVID list. So, And at the time, backup quarterback Sean Mannion, who is not a good quarterback, he's a pay, he's a, he holds a clipboard. Um, he was on the coming. He was on the COVID list, and so everybody's saying, "Oh, this is this will be Mon's chance to to start. We'll get to see this kid." And Mon got a chance to do practice all week up until Friday, and then all of a sudden, Mannion's off the COVID list, and he's immediately named the starter. And um, the Vikings signed long time. Well, I would I say long time ago. Uh, former Viking backup Kyle Slaughter, they um, Rick Spielman signed him for backup because you know Kirk's out and you know he, it doesn't hurt to have another quarterback. But uh, Mannion started; he played the whole game, and then in one series towards the end of the game, he came out injured allegedly. Mon came out, and Mon looked like a looked like a, a third round draft pick. And that was the only time he got to play. You know, the game was pretty much out of hand by that point. You think, oh, Mon's coming in. Or he's getting his he's getting his lumps. He's getting a chance to learn the system. But after his drive, which was a three and out, and then the Vikings kicked it away and then got the ball back, they brought Mannion back in. It's like, what the, what the F? And then after the game, Zimmer's comments, throwing the kid, Mon, under the bus. Of everything that happened that game, everything bad that the Vikings did, a one thing... That Zimmer did, he he threw his young rookie quarterback under the bus, and it just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And then uh, his comments, oh, why are, will we see Kellen Mond start against the Bears last week? And Zimmer's like, no. And then, why is that? He says, I see him every day in practice. And just his attitude towards the, the press all year and the last couple of years in general, and his attitude towards a rookie kid who's just trying to, trying to do his best it just rubbed people the wrong way and then finally at the end of the Vikings game the following morning Monday morning Black Monday Zimmer gets fired but so does Spielman it's just a really big uh, shit show that's been going on in Minnesota for the last uh, for the last week so they've lined up candidates um, they're looking at different candidates for head coach and uh, general manager the Viking uh, co-owner uh, and President Mark Wolf, the youngest Wolf brother, has said that the the GM is going to be the new GM is going to be alongside the hiring process, but yet they're still looking at they're kind of interviewing both sides. So my guess is I believe personally they have somebody in mind for general manager. They've probably talked to that person already and they gotten a list of ideas, a list from them who they think would be a great candidate. So I think that's what's going on now. So I don't think the Vikings have jumped on the search wagon late. Like some people think. I think they're just doing their due diligence. I think they know who they want to hire. And they might already have somebody in mind, but they're just going through all the interview processes. They got the Rooney rule that they have to follow the NFL where they have to interview one uh, candidate of minority. Um, for some, that's the NFL rule. Uh, personally, I... I mean, I'm all for equality, but at the same time, I'm for hiring the best candidate possible, whether it's black, white, gay, male, female, whatever. Uh, they are interviewing a female. Uh, she works with the Cleveland, uh, excuse me, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. And she seems like a smart cookie. Um, there's a lot of others they're into. They're interviewing, but as far as head coaches. Um, a lot of people are like, they need an offensive-minded coach, and they need to get away from defensive-minded. I just want who's the best as far as leadership. I don't want just one guy. I don't want a head coach hired because he's the opposite of what Mike Zimmer was. Mike Zimmer is a great defensive-minded coach. Was. I mean, he's past his prime. This is not 1990s football anymore. This is 2022. But we need a head coach that's a leader. That the players, all 53 on the roster, 
can come around and be led by and support him. That wasn't the case with Zimmer. There's a lot of stuff coming out there, the, the toxicity in the organization, and it was it was very ugly, as seen in some of the games and just the people's attitudes. And the fact that three of the captains of the team have come out and said things need to change, including the continuity and the toxicity needs to go away, it, it speaks volumes. And, of course, the three players that came out, not one of them, of course, Kirk Cousins, and that's the other thing. I, I'm not here to bash Kirk. I'm not here to praise him. He's a great quarterback, but he is now worth $45 million, which is what the cap hit is going to be for 2022. So um, if he wants to extend his contract and lower that price so they can spend some of that extra money for better pro uh, players at other positions of need, such as the O-line, we need guard help. We need a new center. We need corners. Um, I'm all for keeping him, but if he doesn't want to be a team player and help out, um, I'm sure there's a team they can find that would gladly take him. And I think uh, there are several quarterback needy teams, such as Pittsburgh, Denver, Cleveland, possibly, that needs a quarterback. And I think Kirk Cousins, if he doesn't agree to an extension that maximizes his deal out and helps the team out a little bit, I think he's going to be gone. But coaching-wise, I think it's time to go in a different direction, somebody more of a leadership role than what Zimmer has. And um, I have I, my select few, but I'll do that in another video sometime. Or I'll just talk about it when the um, hire is done. So what do you guys think? What should the Vikings do? Should they hire defensive-minded, offensive-minded, or just somebody to be a team leader and let the coordinators deal with that? That's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, peace. Thank you.